Romanian soil struck again. Russian drone debris and Ukraine's fight for justice. In an unsettling reminder of the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe, Romania has once again found itself an unintended witness to the Ukraine war's far-reaching impacts. The Romanian Defense Ministry has reported the discovery of debris from what appears to be a Russian drone in a rural area, a stark testament to the war raging just beyond its borders. The fragments, believed to be of Russian origin, were found near the village of Plauru in Tulsia County, close to the Ukrainian port of Ismail, following relentless Russian attacks on Ukraine's port infrastructure. These assaults, targeting civilian and port facilities, prompted Romania to scramble warplanes to safeguard its airspace and issue urgent alerts to its citizens. Romania's defense ministry has vehemently condemned these acts, labeling them as unjustified and in serious contradiction with the norms of international law. NATO allies have been duly informed, underscoring the broader implications of this regional conflict on international security. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, a dramatic turn of events has unfolded. President Volodymyr Zelensky announced the capture of an 18-year-old suspect linked to the assassination of Irina Farian, a former lawmaker and staunch advocate for the Ukrainian language. Farian, 60, was tragically gunned down in Lviv, an act that sent shockwaves through the nation. Farian, a parliamentary member from 2012 to 2014, was renowned for her efforts to promote the Ukrainian language amidst the prevalent use of Russian, especially in the eastern regions near the Russian border. Her untimely death has deeply affected Ukraine, with thousands attending her funeral in Lviv to pay their respects. The capture of the suspect, achieved through a rigorous and complex operation by Ukraine's National Police, SBU, and other services, marks a significant step towards justice. President Zelensky emphasized the difficulty of the operation, reflecting the intense dedication of Ukrainian authorities to uphold law and order amid the chaos of war. As the conflict continues to spill over into neighboring territories and claims lives, the resilience of those affected remains a poignant reminder of the human cost of war. We will continue to bring you updates as these stories develop. Biden and Netanyahu. A crucial meeting amid Gaza turmoil. In a pivotal moment for Middle East diplomacy, U.S. President Joe Biden will press Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Thursday to finalize a Gaza ceasefire deal. This urgent diplomatic effort comes as Biden's unexpected decision to exit the presidential race could affect his influence over the Israeli leader. Netanyahu is also scheduled to meet Vice President Kamala Harris, the anticipated Democratic presidential nominee, at the White House. This meeting follows his fiery speech to the U.S. Congress, where he vowed total victory against Hamas, igniting passionate responses from both supporters and critics. Relations between Biden and Netanyahu have been strained due to Israel's actions in the war triggered by Hamas's October 7 attacks. Despite Biden's unwavering military and political support for Israel, tensions have simmered over the conflict's conduct and humanitarian toll. In his final months in office, Biden is determined to secure a truce and facilitate the release of hostages held in Gaza. However, Netanyahu might be inclined to delay negotiations until Biden's successor takes office, potentially altering the dynamics of any future agreements. During Netanyahu's first White House visit of Biden's presidency, the two leaders will convene in the Oval Office at 1 p.m., 1700 GMT. They will also meet with the families of U.S. hostages currently held in Gaza, underscoring the personal stakes involved in these high-stakes negotiations. On Thursday, the Israeli military announced the recovery of the bodies of five people held in Gaza since the October 7 attack, in an operation conducted in Khan Yunis. This grim discovery highlights the ongoing human cost of the conflict. In his Sunday primetime speech explaining his decision to step down from the presidential race, the 81-year-old Biden reaffirmed his commitment to resolving the Gaza conflict. I'm going to keep working to end the war on Gaza, bring home all the hostages, and bring peace and security to the Middle East, Biden declared to the nation. A senior U.S. administration official revealed on Wednesday that negotiations for a Gaza ceasefire are in their final stages, with Biden aiming to bridge the remaining gaps with Netanyahu. We believe it's in the closing stages and a deal is closable, the official stated indicating a week of intense diplomatic activity ahead. Despite Netanyahu's defiant address to Congress, which sparked widespread protests, 
a potential truce is reportedly within reach. The final hurdles involve the logistics of the deal's implementation, with Hamas showing some flexibility on its demands for an Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. While Biden and Netanyahu work to finalize the deal, Netanyahu's separate meeting with Harris suggests a possible shift in U.S. policy under her potential future administration. Harris has been more vocal about Israel's conduct in the war, raising speculation about changes in approach if she becomes the Democratic nominee. Adding to the political theater, Republican contender Donald Trump is set to meet Netanyahu at his Mare Lago residence in Florida on Friday, further highlighting the international ramifications of the Gaza conflict. Throughout this crisis, Biden has demonstrated steadfast support for Israel, famously embracing Netanyahu at Tel Aviv airport shortly after the October 7 attacks. However, Biden has also voiced growing concerns over the Palestinian death toll and the limited aid reach in Gaza. Despite the challenges, Washington continues its substantial military backing of Israel. The conflict, which began with the October 7 Hamas attack resulting in the deaths of 1,197 people in Israel, has since claimed over 39,100 Palestinian lives, predominantly civilians, according to Gaza Health Ministry data. As the world watches these critical negotiations, the hope for a peaceful resolution remains paramount. We will continue to bring you the latest updates on this evolving story. China's secretive space plane, a dual-use marvel in the skies. In the vast expanse of space, a shadowy figure glides through the stars, China's uncrewed reusable spacecraft. This mysterious vehicle, launching atop a rocket booster and landing at a covert military airfield, is shrouded in secrecy. Experts speculate that it might be testing cutting-edge technology, with potential applications that range from peaceful to profoundly strategic. On its third mission, this enigmatic craft was observed performing an intriguing maneuver, releasing an object, moving several kilometers away, and then returning to within a few hundred meters. Such actions hinted its capability for military applications, including the inspection and potential disabling of enemy satellites. But the possibilities don't end there. As Marco Langbrook of Delft University of Technology suggests, this technology could also be used for more benign purposes, such as refueling satellites. As global militaries expand their satellite networks, a reusable spacecraft capable of interference could be invaluable. Despite its secrecy, China's spaceplane echoes the capabilities of the U.S.'s Boeing X-37B, which first took flight in 2010. Russia, too, has launched satellites that U.S. officials suspect may have weaponized capabilities, though these claims have been denied. Victoria Samson of the Secure World Foundation views both the Chinese and U.S. spaceplanes as primarily technological demonstrators, rather than tools of immediate military utility. However, the dual-use nature of these technologies keeps global powers on alert. China's Ministry of Defense remains tight-lipped about the specifics of the spaceplane, which has been operating since 2020. Its latest mission, launched in December 2023, continues to fuel speculation. Tracking data reveals its launch from Jiaquan in north-central China and its landing at a heavily secured airfield in Lop Nur, Xinjiang. The airfield, linked to a former nuclear testing site, underscores the military interest in this technology. The spaceplane's changing altitudes and maneuvers suggest capabilities comparable to the US X-37B, which has spent up to 908 days in orbit. Given its extended missions, China's spaceplane is presumed to be uncrewed, despite launching atop a human-rated booster, the Long March 2F. The intrigue surrounding China's spaceplane evokes memories of the U.S. space shuttle and the Soviet Buran. Both programs had military overtones, with the space shuttle performing classified missions and Buran completing an automated orbital flight in 1988. The U.S. X-37B, much like its Chinese counterpart, conducts classified missions aimed at advancing reusable vehicle technologies. These experiments may hold significant intelligence value influencing the duration of its missions. The potential for these vehicles to inspect or disable adversary satellites adds a layer of strategic complexity. While weapons of mass destruction in space are prohibited by the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, the dual-use nature of space technology blurs the lines between peaceful exploration and military strategy. 
China's hypersonic glide vehicle test in 2021 further demonstrates the nation's pursuit of advanced orbital capabilities. India, keenly observing these developments, views the Chinese spaceplane with concern. As two senior Indian military officers noted, the dual-use potential of this spacecraft is alarming. The eyes of the world are on China's secretive spaceplane, as it silently navigates the final frontier, a harbinger of both technological progress and geopolitical tension. Kharkiv under siege. Russian strikes claim lives and ravage GO office. In a devastating escalation of violence, Russian attacks have rocked the northeastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv and its surrounding region. This relentless assault on Wednesday claimed three lives, injured at least six, and severely damaged the office of a Swiss mine-clearing NGO, underscoring the ongoing human and infrastructural toll of this brutal conflict. Kharkiv, Ukraine's second-largest city, has borne the brunt of drone, missile, and guided bomb attacks since Russia's full-scale invasion began in February 2022. The latest barrage struck the town of Lozova, south of Kharkiv, where regional police reported three fatalities and six injuries. As rescue operations continued into the night, the community grappled with the aftermath of yet another harrowing day. Ole Sinihubov, the region's governor, described the overnight strike that obliterated the facade of the Foundation Suisse de Damienage's office, a crucial NGO dedicated to mine-clearing efforts. The attack also collapsed the ceilings of several floors and damaged six vehicles used by the group's medics. In a region densely littered with landmines and war remnants, the demining initiatives supported by this NGO are vital for civilian safety and rebuilding efforts. Kharkiv's mayor, Ihor Tarikov, detailed five separate strikes on the city, with the latest targeting an industrial area and wounding six individuals. This relentless assault has not only destroyed unspecified infrastructure but also inflicted significant damage on vehicles and other essential resources. As the evening wore on, Sinihubov reported additional strikes, with local media confirming explosions outside the city after midnight. While no further casualties or damage were immediately reported, the fear and uncertainty gripping the region are palpable. Despite Russia's denials of deliberately targeting civilians, the grim reality is that thousands have been killed and injured over the course of this 29-month-old invasion. The human cost of this conflict is staggering, and the latest attacks in Kharkiv are a stark reminder of the ongoing crisis. We remain committed to keeping you informed as this tragic situation unfolds, and our thoughts are with the people of Kharkiv and all those affected by this conflict. Tensions in the Middle East Putin hosts Assad amid rising regional strife. In a significant diplomatic move, Russian President Vladimir Putin welcomed Syrian President Bashar Assad to the Kremlin this week, as regional tensions continue to escalate. The meeting, captured on video by the Kremlin press service, underscores the complex and volatile dynamics of the Middle East. During their discussion, Putin expressed his concern over the increasing unrest in the region. I am very interested in your opinion on how the situation in the region as a whole is developing, Putin said to Assad. Unfortunately, there is a tendency towards escalation, we can see that. This also applies directly to Syria. Since 2015, Russia has played a pivotal role in Syria, supporting Assad's government alongside Iran to combat armed opposition groups and regain control over most of the country. Despite its current focus on military operations in Ukraine, Russia maintains a significant military presence in Syria. The Kremlin provided limited details on the specifics of their talks. However, one key topic likely included the potential restoration of diplomatic relations between Syria and Turkey. The relationship between the two countries was severed in 2011 amid the onset of Syria's civil war, with Turkey supporting insurgent groups opposing Assad. Recent efforts, brokered by Russia, have aimed to bridge this divide. In December 2022, the defense ministers of Turkey, Syria, and Russia convened in Moscow for the first high-level talks since the split. This meeting followed a series of negotiations facilitated by Russia, with both Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Assad expressing interest in mending ties. Last week, rumors surfaced about an upcoming meeting between Erdogan and Assad in Moscow this August, though Turkish officials swiftly denied these reports. Erdogan has since invited Assad to Turkey or to meet in a third country, 
signaling a potential thaw in relations. The path to normalization, however, is fraught with challenges. Assad has stipulated that Turkey must withdraw its troops from northern Syria and cease its support for insurgent groups, which Damascus labels as terrorists. This meeting between Putin and Assad marks their first encounter since March 2023, when they convened to commemorate the 12th anniversary of Syria's civil war. At that time, Putin highlighted the stabilizing role of the Russian military in Syria. As geopolitical tensions continue to rise, the outcome of these high-stakes discussions could have profound implications for the future of the Middle East. Israel recovers bodies of hostages and soldiers from Gaza. In a poignant development, Israel has successfully recovered the body of Maya Goran, a 56-year-old woman who was taken hostage by Hamas during the brutal and unexpected attack on October 7. Her body was retrieved from Khan Yunis, in the southern Gaza Strip, during a daring military operation led by Shin Bet investigators. Maya Gorin, a beloved kindergarten teacher from near Oz Kibbutz, was abducted on the morning of the attack as she prepared for her pupils. Tragically, her husband, Evern Gorin, was killed in the assault on their home. In the same operation, the bodies of three soldiers, Staff Sergeant, Rez, Oren Golden, Staff Sergeant Tomer Ahimas, and Sergeant Kirill Brodsky, were also recovered. Later, the IDF announced the recovery of a fourth soldier, Sergeant, Rez, Ravid Arye Katz, alongside Maya Gorin. Rear Admiral Daniel Haggery, IDF spokesman, emphasized that the operation was meticulously planned based on intelligence from interrogated terrorists. The IDF and Shin Bet continue to deploy all operational and intelligence efforts to accomplish the supreme national mission of returning all the hostages, Haggery said. Since the harrowing events of October 7, 251 Israelis have been taken hostage by Hamas, with 115 still in captivity. The kibbutz of Nir Oz confirmed Maya's body was returned Wednesday night. Her son, Gal Gorin, expressed his sorrow and gratitude, saying, Your personal abandonment has finally ended, and you have earned eternal rest beside father. We call for the immediate return of the kidnapped those alive for rehabilitation and those murdered for burial. They all deserve this closure, and their abandonment must end. This recovery follows the IDF's recent confirmation of the deaths of two other hostages, Alex Danzig and Yagav Bushtab, whose bodies remain in Hamas's possession. This heart-wrenching news highlights the ongoing struggle and relentless efforts to bring all Israeli hostages home. Our thoughts are with the families enduring these unimaginable hardships. Urgent. Oil spill nears Manila after tanker capsizes. A severe environmental disaster is unfolding off the coast of the Philippines. On Thursday, the marine tanker Mount Terra Nova capsized in rough seas near Lime, Bataan Province, leading to an oil spill that threatens to reach the waters of the capital, Manila. The tanker, carrying 1,494 metric tons of industrial fuel, sank in challenging conditions, resulting in the tragic death of one crew member. Sixteen others have been rescued, but the spill poses a significant threat to the region. Transportation Secretary Jamie Bautista reported, There is already oil spill. Right now, we cannot dispatch our resources because of strong winds and high waves. Efforts to contain the spill are hindered by adverse weather, with the Coast Guard deploying a 97-meter vessel and preparing additional resources once the conditions improve. An aerial survey revealed the oil slick spreading roughly two nautical miles, driven by strong waves. Coast Guard spokesperson Armando Bolillo emphasized the urgency of the situation. We are racing against time. We will do our best to contain the fuel. He warned of the big danger the spill could pose to Manila's waters. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has directed the Environment Ministry to assess the damage, with officials already en route to the affected area. The crew of Mount Terra Nova encountered rough seas before the vessel capsized, and an investigation is underway to determine if Typhoon Gami, which recently caused widespread flooding and fatalities, played a role in the disaster. The Mount Terra Nova incident follows last year's oil spill from the Mount Princess Empress, which took three months to clean up and affected several tourist towns. The potential impact on Manila and its surrounding regions could be catastrophic if the oil spill is not swiftly contained. 
Kremlin signals openness to talks with Ukraine amidst war tensions. In a surprising turn of events, the Kremlin has indicated its willingness to engage in negotiations with Ukraine to end the ongoing conflict, even while Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky remains in power. Despite previous doubts about Zelensky's legitimacy, Russia seems prepared to discuss peace, but with significant conditions. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuliba, during a recent visit to China, stated that Kyiv is open to talks with Russia, provided that Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity are fully respected. However, he mentioned that Ukraine has yet to see any concrete signs from Russia indicating a readiness to honor these principles. The Kremlin, while expressing openness to talks, continues to question Zelensky's mandate. They point out that his five-year term expired in May, arguing that he should have called an election. However, Zelensky and his Western allies maintain that normal political processes must be suspended during wartime, a position the Kremlin is in no place to critique given its own tightly controlled political system. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov stated on Thursday, Russia is generally open to a negotiation process. But first, we have to understand how ready the Ukrainian side is for this and how much the Ukrainian side has permission for this from its handlers. Moscow has repeatedly portrayed Zelensky as a puppet of the U.S., a characterization he firmly rejects. Peskov highlighted several obstacles to negotiations, including the legitimacy issue and a Ukrainian legal ban on any contacts and negotiations with Russia. He noted, the question is not an easy one. From a legal point of view this problem, of his legitimacy, is on the agenda, but from a practical point of view we are open to achieving our goals through negotiations. Therefore, different options are possible here. Back in May, Reuters reported that Putin was willing to consider a negotiated ceasefire but was also prepared to continue the war if Kyiv and the West did not respond. In June, Putin stated that Russia would end the war if Kyiv agreed to drop its NATO ambitions and hand over the entirety of four provinces claimed by Moscow, demands that Kyiv swiftly rejected. As tensions continue to escalate, the potential for negotiations remains uncertain. The world watches closely to see if a path to peace can be found amidst the complexities and conditions laid out by both sides. Vietnamese missile frigate makes strategic stop in Russia. In a remarkable display of international maritime relations, the Vietnamese missile frigate, Hung Dao, has arrived in Vladivostok, Russia, on a business call, as reported by Russia's TASS state news agency. This significant visit underscores the growing ties between Vietnam and Russia and comes on the heels of President Vladimir Putin's recent trip to Vietnam. The frigate, commissioned by the Vietnamese Navy in 2018 and built in Russia, is designed to search, track, and counter enemy surface, underwater, and air targets. Despite its formidable capabilities, it is considered a light frigate with a maximum displacement of 2,500 tons. The press service of Russia's Pacific Fleet announced the arrival of Hung Dao, emphasizing the strategic nature of this visit. The frigate will remain in Russia until the end of July, providing ample time for both nations to strengthen their maritime cooperation and discuss future collaborations. This visit to Vladivostok, located in Russia's Far East, highlights the strategic importance of the Asia-Pacific region. During his recent visit to Vietnam, President Putin expressed his desire to build a reliable security architecture in this critical area, signaling a commitment to enhancing security and stability. The mooring of the Vietnamese frigate in Vladivostok is not just a routine stop but a symbol of the deepening military and diplomatic relations between the two countries. As global dynamics shift, such partnerships become crucial in maintaining regional security and fostering mutual cooperation. France's Air Force mission in Indonesia, strengthening security ties in the Indo-Pacific. In a significant move to bolster security ties in the Indo-Pacific region, the French Air Force made a notable stopover in Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, on Wednesday. This visit is part of the Pegasus mission, showcasing France's unwavering commitment to regional security amidst escalating Chinese maritime activities. The Pegasus mission, which includes stops in Malaysia and Singapore, featured an impressive display of two Rafale fighter jets, a tanker transport plane, and an A400M Airbus military transport plane at Jakarta's Halim Perdanakusuma Air Force Base. Brigadier General Guillaume Thomas, chief of the 2024 Pegasus Mission, 
emphasized the mission's objective. We want to assert our position as a proactive regional power in the Indo-Pacific, dedicated to the security of the area and defending the freedom of navigation when necessary. This visit underscores the growing military cooperation between France and Indonesia. Brigadier General Thomas announced that Indonesian President-elect Prabowo Subianto and French President Emmanuel Macron are set to meet in Paris this week to further strengthen diplomatic and military ties. Indonesia is actively modernizing its defense capabilities, having completed an order for 42 French Rafale fighter jets in January, with the first delivery expected in early 2026. This acquisition is part of a broader strategy to enhance Indonesia's military arsenal and defense industry. Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto has been instrumental in this drive, seeking new military systems from countries like China, Russia, Turkey, France, and the United States. The backdrop to these developments is the rising tension in the South China Sea, where China's expansive claims have caused regional disputes. Although Indonesia is not a claimant state, it has clashed with China over fishing rights around the Natuna Islands, located within Indonesia's exclusive economic zone but also claimed by China. The South China Sea is a critical region with vital shipping lanes, abundant fish stocks, and rich undersea mineral resources. Despite efforts, China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have yet to finalize a code of conduct to prevent conflicts in the area. France's Pegasus mission and its collaboration with Indonesia are crucial steps towards ensuring stability and security in the Indo-Pacific. As Indonesia continues to upgrade its defense capabilities, this partnership with France highlights a shared commitment to peace and security in the region. Hungary's rule of law crisis EU slams Budapest for severe democratic deficits. In a scathing evaluation released Thursday, the European Commission has highlighted Hungary's troubling deviations from EU democratic standards, marking a deepening rift between Brussels and Budapest. The Commission's annual rule of law report paints a stark picture of Hungary's ongoing issues, revealing serious concerns about corruption, bribery, political funding, conflicts of interest, and media independence. Despite Hungary's current tenure as EU president, these systemic problems have continued to strain its relationships with EU partners. EU Justice Commissioner Didier Reinders did not mince words, describing Hungary as a real systemic issue for the Commission regarding rule of law breaches. The report notes that Hungary has made minimal progress on issues identified in previous evaluations, prompting the Commission to issue eight recommended remedies, an increase from last year's seven. According to an anonymous EU official, this is an absolute record for the rule of law report. Key findings from the report. Corruption concerns. The report highlights high levels of corruption within Hungary's public sector. High-level corruption remains largely unaddressed by prosecutors, particularly in public spending and local municipalities, where political networks have been linked to abuses in tender processes. Media independence threats. The report points to significant threats to media pluralism and freedom. Issues include the composition of the media regulator and lack of transparency regarding state advertising and media ownership. Judicial and legislative issues. Increasing state interventions and arbitrary decisions by authorities have been noted as weakening legal certainty and affecting businesses operating within the EU single market. Despite some minimal remedial steps, many were deemed insufficient, non-binding, or non-existent. This contrasts sharply with the overall rule of law report, where 68% of recommended changes had been addressed in other scrutinized countries. The European Commission has already frozen billions in EU funds for Hungary due to its non-compliance with bloc standards. While 10 billion euros were controversially released last year, 20 billion euros remain withheld until Hungary makes necessary reforms. A legal procedure initiated in 2018 could potentially lead to Hungary losing its voting rights in EU matters, and numerous infringement proceedings are still ongoing. The eight reforms urged by the Commission include crucial improvements to Hungary's justice system, enhanced oversight of lobbying activities, media regulator independence, and the removal of barriers faced by civil society organizations. Chaos erupts in D.C. as anti-Israel protesters clash with police during Netanyahu's Congress address. On Wednesday, Washington, D.C., was rocked by intense protests as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed a joint session of Congress. The demonstration, 
marked by heated confrontations and dramatic acts, underscored the deep divisions over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Protesters, many of whom were anti-Israel agitators, converged on the nation's capital, creating a scene of unrest. In a striking display, some demonstrators burned an American flag at Union Station and defaced a Christopher Columbus statue with graffiti reading, Hamas is coming, replacing American symbols with the Palestinian flag. Amid the turmoil, one protester was seen carrying what appeared to be a Hamas flag, while others chanted slogans like, Allahu Akbar, and used derogatory language against a Jewish passerby. The protest escalated as a man attempted to save the burning American flag, only to be chased and confronted by the demonstrators. Inside the capital, the protest took a more focused turn. Representative Rashida Tlaib, D. Mish, held up a sign labeling Netanyahu a war criminal during his speech. Demonstrators outside chanted, Free Palestine, and slogans calling for an end to U.S. aid to Israel, with some signs urging to stop the genocide and stop arming Israel. The demonstrations led to multiple arrests. U.S. Capitol Police detained six individuals for disrupting the congressional session, while the D.C. Metropolitan Police cleared protesters blocking traffic near the Capitol. Despite the chaos, the French government's security mission in Southeast Asia, including a recent stop in Jakarta, highlights contrasting international dynamics. NORAD tracks Chinese-Russian bomber patrol near Alaska amid rising tensions. On Wednesday, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, reported a significant military maneuver involving China and Russia. Two Chinese and two Russian long-range bombers were tracked flying over international waters near Alaska, prompting a response from U.S. and Canadian fighter jets. Despite the dramatic appearance, NORAD emphasized that this joint air patrol did not pose an immediate threat. The exercise, which spanned over the Bering Sea and the Chukchi Sea, was described as a routine operation to test and enhance coordination between the Chinese and Russian air forces. The Russian Defense Ministry confirmed that the patrol lasted more than five hours and included both Russian and Chinese strategic bombers. The exercise marks the eighth joint strategic air patrol between the two nations since 2019. Photos released by both the Russian Defense Ministry and China's state broadcaster showcased the bombers flying in tandem against the backdrop of the sky. As China increasingly extends its military reach beyond its borders, including recent naval activity near Alaska, the exercise has heightened regional security concerns. Japan, particularly, has voiced alarm over the growing frequency of joint drills between China and Russia and their implications for regional stability. NORAD reassured that it will continue to monitor such activities closely, maintaining a vigilant presence in North American airspace.